Okay, I want to talk to you about Bacon's Rebellion today, which is really one of the most important early conflicts in American history. You're going to have some very far-reaching ramifications. It all goes down in 1676 in Virginia. And remember, Virginia controlled by England at this time. England had been in control of Virginia since it first settled there in 1607 in Jamestown. So let me explain a couple groups and then the rebellion and then uh, the major effect of it. So the first group you've got to understand and know about the rebellion are the Tidewater Aristocrats. And you, this picture really sums them up right here, but let's break down this term here. Tidewater, they call Tidewater because they lived in the Tidewater region of Virginia, which was like the coastal area, close to all the little river inlets and Chesapeake area, prime real estate. Uh, aristocrats, because they were rich, right? They lived in these big houses right here on these huge plantations, and they grew lots of tobacco, and then they would ship it back to England, make a fortune. They also control the first elected assembly known as the House of Burgesses, the, the governing body of Virginia at that time, is controlled by the, the Tidewater aristocrats for the most part. The other group you got to understand are these guys right here, indentured servants. Zoom in here. Um, these guys were the people who worked on the plantations of the Tidewater aristocrats. So you have to understand right now that slavery is not big in the United States yet. Where did they get their labor from, these Tidewater aristocrats? These guys, indentured servants. An indentured servant was essentially a poor person from England or Scotland or some other country who, for their passage to the New World, which was paid for by the Tidewater aristocrat, would work on that Tidewater aristocrat's plantation for usually the year was, the amount, it was about seven years. But after those seven years, they were free to go do what they want. So it's oftentimes a good way of maybe kind of starting a new life. And so now by 1676, we have a lot of indentured servants who have been freed, who have worked their seven years um, and now are free in this new world to start their own life. And where do a lot of them go? Well, they can't go to the Tidewater, so they go inland. They go westward to the Blue Ridge Mountains, and it's called the backcountry in Virginia. And they begin to settle their own land. And they run into a group who's living on that land. Who do those indentured servants run into? The Native Americans. And they start to have a lot of conflict with the Native Americans. And one of the guys decides who is, or one of the backcountry farmers living out there, name is Nathaniel Bacon, decides we need some help back here. And so he makes a plea to the House of Burgesses. He says, will you help us, the backcountry landowners, defeat these Native Americans out here? House of Burgesses refuses to help because what Nathaniel Bacon, this guy right here, doesn't realize is House of Burgesses has a secret deal with the Native Americans for trading. And so Nathaniel Bacon takes his followers, and that's where you get this picture right here, and he marches to the House of Burgesses, confronts them, who House of Burgesses is led by this guy right here, William Berkeley, and says, you better help us with the Native Americans. If you don't, we're going to burn this building down. As a show of force, he goes and burns down parts of Jamestown. He says, you're next. And then Nathaniel Bacon and his followers retreat. And kind of out of the blue, he ends up getting sick and dying of dysentery. And so his rebellion is essentially over. And so a big question has been raised among the Tidewater aristocrats now. What are we going to do with these indentured servants who all of a sudden become free but then they go looking for new land and end up causing these big conflicts like Nathaniel Bacon has just done. How can we get a form of labor in here who we don't have to set free? And so in a really indirect way, Nathaniel Bacon's rebellion leads to slavery in this new world. Because these Tidewater aristocrats realize, well, every time we free these indentured servants, they go move out to the back country and cause a ruckus like this rebellion. Well, let's get some labor in here that we never have to free. And so the slave trade is going to take off in a very big way after Nathaniel Bacon's rebellion. 1680s, 1690s, early 1700s, the African slave trade in the Americans is going to flourish. And that is in large part because indentured servitude, in the eyes of the Tidewater aristocrats at least, has failed. And slavery becomes a lot cheaper, and you never have to free these individuals.